Today, in accordance with the City Charter, the Department of Finance presented our fiscal year 2014 preliminary budget plan to the Board of Estimates. The budget closes a projected $30 million budget deficit with minimal service impacts, relying upon fiscal reforms outlined in the 10-year financial plan, our city's first 10-year uh, financial plan uh, change to grow. As you know, the 10-year financial plan includes a bold set of major reforms uh, to help the city grow by 10,000 families over the next 10 years, eliminating a projected $750 million cumulative budget deficit, uh, protecting basic city services from further cuts, making new capital investments in neighborhood infrastructure, all while reducing the property homeowner tax taxes by more than 20 percent over the next 10 years. The 10-year plan reforms uh, proposed in the preliminary uh, budget include increasing civilian uh, pension contributions, creating a state-mandated stormwater utility fund, creating fleet restructuring, excuse me, uh, fleet restructuring, employee leave reform, and previously enacted health benefit changes that will generate a full year annual savings of more than $20 million. The budget also proposes a 2% cost of living increase for employees to offset, an, offset new pension contributions and make our employee pay more competitive. It provides a one-time funding surge of $10 million to support demolition of vacant homes, increases capital investment in neighborhood infrastructure, including street resurfacing and recreation center upgrades, all while cutting the effective property tax rate for city homeowners to 2.168 per $100 of assessed value, representing a $0.10 cent cut uh, in, since fiscal year 2012. The preliminary budget represents a significant step forward in beginning to implement the major, f major fiscal reforms in the 10-year financial plan. Implementing the 10-year plan, starting with this year's budget, will require tough trade-offs from all of us and major, major changes to past practices and the way the city has done business. But doing so will help us to, to start making smart investments uh, that will reward the future and help get the city growing again. The budget was, uh, was built in the spirit of our vision of growing the city's population by 10,000 families and its focus on core priority outcomes, including better schools, safer streets, stronger neighborhoods, and a growing economy. I'll briefly outline some of the funding highlights and then turn it over to uh, Mr. Klein for additional background and details. The budget provides $40 million, $42 million for our Better Schools Initiative to modernize city school buildings, uh, more than doubling the, city's, the city government's contribution to school construction and renovation uh, over historic levels. The budget fully funds the city's contribution to public schools and it also keeps all library branches open and maintains current hours of operation to improve third grade reading and support lifelong learning. The budget fully supports our aggressive efforts to hire more than 100 new police officers this year to keep pace with attrition and funds our state of the arts crime camera program which has grown by more than 100 cameras since 2010. It maintains uh, funding to prevent youth violence, which has declined dramatically over the past years. And the budget keeps all fire companies in service and provides transitioning firefighters to three-shift to three shift model, subject to uh, arbitration. If implemented, the proposed schedule will help maintain emergency response times and generate savings to improve firefighter pay, to replace fire apparatus, and upgrade our aging firehouses. As I mentioned before, this budget cuts taxes again for city homeowners to 2.168 per assessed um, $100, I mean, excuse me, per $100 of assessed value, representing a 10 cent cut over uh, two years. The budget supports our vacancy to value program by increasing baseline capital funding for uh, blight elimination, and it provides for a one time funding surge of $10 million for demolition. It provides $10 million in capital funding to meet our goal of resurfacing at least 200 lane miles in the city's neighborhoods, and it adds $5 million in capital funding to upgrade our recreation centers. The budget also maintains funding for the 5,000 Youth Works summer jobs, and I know uh, many of the media outlets hire for the summer. We are looking for private employment opportunities for our, our youth. Our goal is to uh, double the number of youth opportunities in the private sector over last year. 
Uh, we have opportunities. Some companies even sponsor a kid. So if you can't, you know, I know times are lean. You all are, you know, the reporters, the photographers, the editors, and everything else. So if you can't afford it, we can uh, look for sponsorship for you so we can give those kids the opportunity because I know uh, you all have uh, are very focused on uh, making sure that our young people have opportunities. So you can see Ryan after this and he can connect you with the Mayor's Office of Employment. Uh, development so if, if you have those opportunities for our young people uh, and it fully funds a small business resource center and expands emer the emerging technology incubator program uh, which is seeing great results finally the budget provides funding to open a new women's homeless shelter to replace a Guilford Street uh, shelter resulting in a net increase of 50 beds for vulnerable women uh, that wraps up my part of the budget presentation, and I will turn it over to uh, Budget Director Andrew Klein for additional information. Thank you. So, I need to start with the top line numbers. Uh, the total budget, all funds, operating and capital is $3.55 billion. Um, operating budget is $2.39 billion, which is 2.9% uh, above uh, fiscal 2013. That includes a new stormwater utility. Um, uh, it does assume a 9% rate increase for water and wastewater uh, utilities. It also includes uh, dedicated school construction funding, a uh, portion of which is coming from an increased uh, beverage container tax. The general fund operating budget is $1.57 billion, which is $7 million or half percent above fiscal 2013. Um, and as, as the mayor mentioned, we, we have closed a, a $30 million uh, current services budget shortfall. Uh, the capital budget is $1.16 billion. 80% of that is for water and wastewater infrastructure projects. Um, the capital budget is up $396 million from the fiscal 13 level. Um, those increases are mainly related to county grants uh, for water and wastewater infrastructure. Uh, a, a large state grant for Back River Enhanced Nutrient Removal and uh, $30 million in, in one-time general fund PAYGO capital, uh, which will fund uh, recreation center, construction renovation, uh, street resurfacing, uh, demolition, and IT modernization. Uh, funded positions in the general fund um, are down by uh, 18, but this only includes a portion of the uh, positions that will be um, ultimately uh, abolished in fire suppression as we shift to, uh, as we move to a three shift model. Uh, the mayor mentioned that that is subject to arbitration, which will be upcoming. Um, uh, if that plan moves forward, um, it will reduce the, the, the necessary size of the suppression workforce by about 156. Um, and uh, but we're going to do that by attrition. So we assume in fiscal 14. Uh, 30 positions will be vacant um, and, and can be abolished with more coming later as, um, as firefighters retire. The, this budget is rooted in the 10-year the financial plan. Let me just give you some highlights. Um, we, we talked in the fi uh, financial plan about addressing four cornerstones of Baltimore's fiscal foundation. Um, you can see them here. In terms of structural budget balance, I mentioned we, we're closing, we close a $30 million budget shortfall with minimal service impact. Also provide a 2% pay increase for all employees. Um, cost saving initiatives include the firefighter schedule I mentioned and also fleet streamlining. In the area of tax competitiveness, uh, the budget includes a two cent general property tax rate reduction to offset state, partially offset the state mandated stormwater fee. Uh, it also includes an additional six cents uh, targeted homeowner reduction, which is consistent with the uh, 20 cents by 2020 initiative that we, we launched under the 10 year plan in 2013. Um, so the effective property tax rate for owner occupied properties will be $2.168 per hundred dollars uh, of assessed value in fiscal 13. The general uh, property tax rate will be $2.248 per hundred dollars of assessed value. In infrastructure investment, um, we're increasing the base uh, pay-as-you-go capital in the general fund by 4.7 million. 
And we also include a one-time $30 million investment um, that, that I mentioned before for street resurfacing, blight elimination, recreation centers, and, and IT modernization. Um, in terms of addressing long-term liabilities, uh, this budget plan relies upon uh, uh, changes to the, the uh, structure of the ERS pension, both for current employees and also future employees. Um, it, also, it also relies on uh, leave reform to reduce extraordinary payouts over time. To put the budget in context, I just want to quickly review uh, some of the findings in the 10-year plan. We, so we're facing a cumulative budget shortfall in the general fund of $744 million over the, over the next nine years. Um, so we're dealing here with $30 million in fiscal 14, but a number of the things that we're doing in this budget are going to help us to also address these, these future uh, potential shortfalls. We, we estimate that, again, uh, from general fund sources, we, we have a shortfall of $1.1 billion in terms of meeting reasonable capital needs uh, over the next nine years. Um, as I mentioned, we are we're making a down payment in this budget on uh, the $370 million of additional capital that, that the 10-year plan will provide if it's fully implemented. And we're facing uh, unfunded liabilities totaling $3.2 billion for our retiree health and pension programs. Uh, as I mentioned, we, uh, this budget includes um, or relies upon pension reform that, that will require uh, legislation that we will be putting forward to the, the City Council. Um, it, the, the, the Mayor mentioned that fiscal 14 will be the first full year um, of our health benefit changes that, that went into effect January 1st of this year. And that was another uh, of the first steps of the 10-year plan that, that we actually pushed ahead and implemented in fiscal 2013. And part of the context is also that uh, Baltimore City has by far the, the highest tax burden uh, in the state. Uh, ours, according, based on the Department of Legislative Services Tax Effort Index. Uh, we are 64% above the statewide average on that measure. So looking at, at our revenue projections, this is the general fund. Um, so in terms of current revenue is the, the blue bars here, um, a modest increase, uh, 10 million from 2013 to 2014. Um, this little red segment is the 30 million in additional pay-as-you-go uh, capital funding uh, for the, the initiatives I mentioned. And uh, the source of this funding is uh, the, the mobile equipment fund. We are, we've changed the way that we finance vehicles. Um, we're moving from a sinking fund approach to a master lease approach. So we're paying, we'll be paying for the vehicles over their useful lives and replacing them as they as those useful lives expire. Um, this is going to enable us to, to greatly accelerate vehicle replacement, um, cut the, the average, uh, the average uh, age of our vehicles in half over the next 10 years. Um, it, it also frees up uh, fund balance that we can use for one-time capital investments. Turning to uh, property tax, just a, a most recent snapshot of what the housing market is looking like. So this blue area is the, the inventory, um, and as the inventory has dropped, um, prices are, have been rising in, in recent period. Now, uh, as that inventory rebounds, we're not sure what effect that will have, but we, we've definitely seen some recovery in housing prices. That said, um, Fiscal 14 is the fourth year in a row of declining property value assessments. Uh, you can see for Group 1, which is the, the northern tier of the city, uh, it's a, a net minus 3.1% between residential and commercial properties. So what that means is 
Um, we have another year of declining property tax revenue. Um, just want to unpack this a little bit. The you know, gross real property tax is down almost 32 million. However, homestead tax credit costs are also down. Uh, more properties uh, are seeing their taxable value uh, equal the full value, um, so no longer getting the credit. Uh, so that's $25 million savings, um, which offsets the, the, the reduced value. Uh, and then we have a, a $6.7 million, which we are using to, um, again, to help offset, reduce the general property tax rate by two cents, uh, helping to offset the, uh, the stormwater fee. Looking at uh, income tax, I want to start with the employment picture. Um, we, you can see the, the bars are the number of jobs held by city residents. Um, we're far from fully recovering from the recession. Uh, and in fact, uh, it's, it's, it's not, I'm not sure if you can even tell, but there's a slight, there was a slight slowdown in the recovery um, in 2012 versus 2011, um, but we are, you know, we're, we're, we're gradually recovering jobs. Um, the, the unemployment rate, you can see we're, we're right about 10%. It's the, this line at the top. Uh, the national rate has dipped just below 8%, and uh, the state is at about 6.5%. So because of the recovery in uh, not only in, in jobs, you know, wages are improving, uh, the stock market's improving, and so our, our income tax revenues are improving. And that's reflected here. Uh, you can see the 2014 budget at about uh, 274 million, uh, up from the 2013 level of 256. So that helps to uh, offset declining property tax revenue. Highway user revenue, um, still well below the peak of 2007, uh, increasing slightly here. Now, now um, we, there's a gas tax bill being worked out in Annapolis. Um, I know some versions of that would actually reduce our highway user revenue. We're hoping that we'll at least be held harmless on highway user revenue. The bill will provide millions of dollars for local transportation projects, but in terms of this source of local revenue, um, we're, we're not expecting any help um, from this legislation. Uh, take a look at, at fixed costs. Uh, we are, you know, the health reforms, the pension reforms um, are having the, the effect of slowing the growth of our fixed costs. Um, you know, retiree health costs are down. Pension costs are still growing. Um, uh, even with the even with the uh, ERS reform that we're talking about, and I'll I'll show you a slide on that. Um, but fixed costs are still making up about 47 percent of general fund revenue. Uh, you know, you go back to 2003, 2004, it was below 40 percent. So um, it reached it reached uh, close to 50 percent, but now. Um, we, we're bringing that down, so we're starting to turn the curve uh, on these costs, which is a, a positive for us. Um, here's a breakdown of pension costs, uh, the city's contribution to the pension funds. Um, the blue line is ERS, and you can see here that uh, we, we estimate a, uh, a reduction. So we built in $6.4 million in savings from uh, from the reforms that I mentioned, uh, if without those, this this number would be, uh, you know, 80, 85, 86 million dollars. Um, the red line is is the fire and police pension system. Uh, the reforms there really flatten that out, but you know they're they're growing, just like just like uh, ERS. Um, the the losses from the recession are still being amortized, uh, and so the total is up to 192 million, a $5 million increase over fiscal 13. So we're not seeing the kinds of 
increases that we saw a few years ago, uh, but the, 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 uh, the growth in these costs is, is relentless. On the health benefit side, um, when you combine the impact of the uh, benefit reforms that we put in place this fiscal year and also the reforms that we made in the previous two fiscal years uh, under this administration, we are we're spending $40 million less than we would have if we did not make those changes. Um, so we've, you know, we have employee re and retiree cost sharing for prescription drug benefit, um, the new standard medical insurance plan on which our um, cost sharing is now based. Uh, we, we changed the copay structure to promote the use of generic drugs. Um, every percentage we can increase that saves us over a million dollars and it's gone from 67% to about 75%. And then we put in several management changes, such as um, prior authorization for certain drugs, uh, limits on the quantity of drugs to prevent hoarding, um, and step therapy, which requires our beneficiaries to try a generic drug um, before they move on to a, a brand name drug if that's necessary. Uh, some highlights of our plan, uh, some of these things the mayor talked about, so I'll, I'll go through them quickly. Um, we, we used outcome budgeting um, as we have the last three years, and, and we focused on uh, the same set of outcomes uh, that we've been, we have stuck with through, through these, uh, these se last several years. So uh, we're fully meeting our maintenance of effort commitment. That's uh, at $202.6 million, uh, $500,000 above the fiscal 13 level. Um, Teacher pension costs are rising from 12.9 million to 16.4 million, and those amounts are actually fixed in state law. Um, they're fixed through 2017, um, and that 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 will be 17.9 million. After that, it's going to be whatever the normal cost is for the system. Um, we are providing. Um, well, I'll get to that. We're supporting uh, the youth opportunity program. Uh, after school programs um, and keeping keeping our libraries open with current hours and we have 42 million in this budget for the the uh, school construction initiative that includes uh, over 10 million from the beverage tax um, funding from the casino lease and uh, table games uh, aid from the state uh, a maintenance uh, uh, a memorandum of understanding that we entered a couple years ago whereby we appropriate to the schools uh, their share, uh, their allocation of retiree uh, health funding, and in turn, they receive 10 million in additional guaranteed tax base funding from the state. Uh, and that, under the MOU, that is dedicated to school construction and renovation. And then our CIP includes $17 million for um, school construction and renovation. Under safer streets, uh, as the mayor mentioned, we're uh, continuing the aggressive plan for police hiring. Uh, we've been running academies every two months. Um, we're fighting against attrition, um, and it's been uh, really toe-to-toe -to -toe these last few years, uh, but we're going to keep uh, hiring as fast as we can. Uh, we have talked about the transition to a three-shift firefighter schedule. Uh, we're fully funding EMS and uh, as well as youth violence prevention programs. In stronger neighborhoods, uh, I mentioned the, the tax rate reduction. Um, I also mentioned that we, uh, part of that 30 million in new capital, uh, 10 million of that will go for blight elimination, you know, demolition in particular. Uh, 10 million will go for street repair and resurfacing so that we can meet or exceed the 200 mile, lane mile goal. Uh, we are supporting in this budget continued operation of eight uh, after-school recreation centers. So these are centers that um, did shift from you know, full schedules to more limited schedules to focus on kids after-school activities. Um, and, and we um, we're going to keep those going. And we will also have a again a Memorial Day to Labor Day pool schedule. And and that pool schedule is detailed in the book if you're interested in that. Uh, under a growing economy, we're maintaining funding for the YouthWorks program. Um, 
we want to engage at least 5,300 youth in um, work opportunities, and, and a portion of those are, are year-round opportunities. That's something that we started funding in the fiscal 13 budget. We're going to enhance the four community job hubs that we started in the fiscal 13 budget. Um, this budget supports a new food desert strategy, which is really an attempt to connect our urban farms with convenience stores, uh, try to get healthier food available to residents throughout the city. Uh, we're, we'll increase support to small businesses and emerging technology through, the, um, uh, through BDC and maintain our funding for key cultural institutions, the, the symphony orchestra and the art museums in particular. Um, under innovative government, we will invest 1.8 million for four new innovation fund projects. Um, those are addressing parking management, uh, energy efficiency, um, and, and uh, parking management, energy efficiency, and, and vehicle safety. Also, um, we've included in the budget, again, from that 30 million I mentioned, 5 million to, to continue transitioning outdated business applications from our mainframe. Um, we're, uh, my office has begun to, to do um, management research studies, and uh, this budget is implementing recommendations that we've made in the areas of employee training, uh, conduct of elections, and grants management. And we're also providing $1 million for audits under the new charter provision. Under a cleaner and healthier city, uh, fully funding the core health and sanitation services, so one plus one, trash and recycling collection, rat control, graffiti removal, um, uh, the things that, that keep our city clean. Uh, we begin operation of a new stormwater utility, and some of the activities around stormwater, including um, street sweeping, will now be funded under this new utility instead of the general fund. Um, so that, that has helped, um, that's provided savings for the general fund, um, majority of which we are using for the tax rate reduction that I mentioned, um, uh, and also obviously to help close that budget shortfall. Uh, we're supporting evidence-based home visiting and, and enhancing funding for a uh, health literacy program for uh, pregnant women and new mothers, opening a new uh, family homeless shelter to replace the Guilford Street shelter, so we'll have a net increase of 50 beds for families. Um, and then finally, last slide, just a few uh, items on state and federal funding. Uh, I talked about the teacher pension uh, uh, shift and the, the, the cost going up there. We will also be facing, uh, starting in fiscal 15, rising um, maintenance of effort costs under the law that was passed last year by the General Assembly. Um, talk about the gas tax, which um, will, will be very benefic beneficial for the city, um, uh, but not providing additional highway user revenue. And finally, uh, our agencies are still getting information from uh, federal government about the, the specific impacts of the sequestration, and we'll, we'll certainly keep uh, the media and others updated on that as we get more information. Um, and that concludes my presentation, and I'd be happy to answer any questions. Can you give us a little more details on the stormwater fee, how it's going to work, and how much it might be per homeowner? So the, the, the basic fee, um, it's, it's, it's the units which equate to about, I think a little over a thousand square feet, um, is $12 per quarter. So most residents will pay that amount uh, because they'll just have one uh, ERU. And don't ask me what that stands for because I can't remember. Um, and it's basically, a, it's a measure of impervious surface. Um, so that's going to be the that's going to be the, the basic fee, and obviously, um, larger property owners, businesses, um, uh, will pay more based on on their square footage, and there are a number of credits that they can earn by increasing uh, the green space on their property and taking other steps to to help control runoff. How much would an average homeowner pay then? Uh, Twelve dollars a quarter. Forty eight a year. Yep. 
Um, it's so a requirement of state law that the media yes. to be clear. Right. Um, 30, um, you mentioned a $30 million shortfall. Yeah. Um, 20 million of which will be covered just by the change in health care, correct? Uh, the, so that was a shortfall from the current level of service estimate, which, which actually already accounted for those health care savings. Oh, okay. So where did those 30 uh, million in um, shortfall, how has that been made up? So a uh, combination of the, the pension reform I talked about, the, uh, the shift of, of some costs to the new stormwater utility. Um, we also have savings in the 10-year plan. Um, we include an initiative to take advantage of the Affordable Care Act. Um, we currently provide supplemental uh, uh, ph uh, pharmaceutical benefits for Medicare retirees to help them uh, deal with the donut hole. By 2020, the donut hole will no longer exist, um, so the city will not need to provide those supplemental benefits. Um, so that actually uh, reduces, by, by announcing today that we're going to um, sunset those benefits, um, that reduces our OPEB liability and allows us to contribute less um, to the OPEB fund. Uh, and, and then we will also, once we hit 2020, we'll, we'll realize some significant how much uh, budget that, savings. How much do you estimate that will save by sunsetting those benefits in this, fiscal, in this coming fiscal year? $5 million. And how, about, and how much will the pension reform save? Is that the biggest yeah, uh, savings? Yeah, six, $6.5 million. Um, and then the stormwater will be about $12 million so savings. On, on the pension reform, you, you said you have legislation plan. Can you be specific like what kind of, is that for contributions or what is that for the, the The two pieces for current um, employees are a phase in of a 5% contribution. Currently, there's no contribution required, uh, so we'll, we'll start with 1%, 2%, so on, up to 5%, um, and eliminate the variable benefit component uh, of the benefit, similar to what we did in the fire and police pension system. And for new hires, future hires, um, we, we are proposing a, a defined contribution or 401k style plan. Yeah, and all of these details were re released in the 10-year financial plan uh, when that was put out regarding the pension reform changes. So there's nothing to do there. Um, you mentioned the sequester. Yes. Um, and that agencies are closely working with their federal counterparts. Right. Um, but does the budget um, change at all because of the sequester, or does, or does it not take into consideration? The preliminary budget does not reflect any changes because we just don't have enough specifics yet um, not only on you know what are the immediate impacts but you know uh, will those be permanent or long term you know so there's just a lot more that we we, we don't know uh, well obviously as we get concrete information we would we would make adjustments to the budget accordingly but uh, we just don't have that now and where's your wiggle room for that adjustment in that 30 million there is no wiggle room uh, that's that's the sad fact is that if um, if we receive cuts in our federal grants um, services will be lost what kind of services I mean is it health housing mm -hmm. law enforcement um, uh, we receive significant you know uh, I think I this first bullet when you operating and capital together we rely on um, state and federal grants for 500 million dollars a year and um, and that cuts across a number of areas. Job training is a big one um, that would that would suffer. So uh, we put out press releases on this last week. We uh, specific cuts, and we then today we're having something on the on the education. So. Could you tell me, please, the um, city unemployment rate? It's at about ten percent. Ten percent. Yeah. And also, um, what are the, what are the employment figures? Are they up or down? Uh, let's go back to. So the bars here are the number of jobs held by city residents, um, you know, peaking at about 265,000. Uh, we hit bottom in early 2010 at just over 240,000. Um, you know, we've recovered back to, you know, around 247, 
thousand. Uh, that's where we are now, and you know you, you can see there was clear recovery from ten to eleven, um, a bit of a slowdown in that recovery in fiscal twelve. Two two forty seven is is, is February, or that looks like uh, I'm I'm looking at sort of the the uh, this right here the bulk and oh, now see, the last but, this is seasonal as you right. can kind of see. Right. Um, uh, so when I say you know we hit bottom here. You know, that's that's in uh, February. You know that tends to be a month where uh, the numbers are lower, but um, you know we have in just these few these last few months, those look better than the the, the same months a year ago. So that's that's positive. Um, but you know through most of 2012, um, they were a little bit down from the year before. We have time for one more question specifically about the budget. I have a question about the budget. What would be the specific savings for um, this coming year from transitioning firefighters to three shifts? How much is that going to save the city? Fiscal 14, um, it's it's a wash because um, we are we're getting to the lower number by attrition. Um, we will have we will have leave payouts um, in excess of what we normally have because you'll have more people uh, leaving. When would you so, start seeing those reductions? So the savings will start um, in fiscal 15. They will average um, about nine million a year under our what we've proposed for, yeah, in our for number. arbitration. The total number uh, over the 81 million over over nine years. Okay. Uh, any questions for the mayor? Yes. Yes. <laughs> uh, the federal school initiative. You talk about that and how. The recent uh, progress on NAPAS fits in with that. Say that again. The better school initiative you have been. The school construction? Yes. Well, so, the better school initiative. No, yeah. I'm just, you're talking yes. about the progress that's been made. I'm very pleased with the progress that has been made in the legislature. We've worked really hard uh, with the leadership in the House and the Senate, as well as with the governor, uh, to put before the legislature a proposal uh, that can pass and will get our objectives met. And you know, I was very clear that we weren't going home again. You know, at the end of Sunny Don, uh, without having a plan, and we have one, and I'm I'm encouraged. What about the city's commitment? I mean, the city certainly is one of the players at the table as a relates to paying. More. The only reason we're at this point is because the city has skin in the game. You know, I didn't go down there with the same proposal that I had last year. We put more rev we put revenue on the table. We put an increase. Uh, investment on the table, and that allowed us to get to the point where you know people from all over the the state could see that we're serious. That I'm serious about m putting this uh, school construction uh, plan before them for to be successful. Can you talk about the settlement to demand for I couldn't hear the last part of your. Long time coming for the family. Oh, uh, definitely as a as a as a mother, there's a. a Terrible tragedy, you know. I I can't even imagine uh, the pain uh, that uh, Deanna's family and her her parents uh, have gone through during this time. Uh, the city has done a lot since 2006 uh, when this incident happened uh, to make sure that something like this doesn't happen again. Uh, but in the end, I think we have an obligation, a moral obligation, to make things right for the family, and that's why I, I wanted to make sure under my administration that this got settled. What specifically has the city done? I've worked with uh, BGE and the Maryland Public Service Commission and the Department of Transportation to do, uh, to do more than ever, including uh, surveying and correction of uh, stray voltage. Madam Mayor, if you could talk about the recent spike in violence in West Baltimore over the past several days. I know the commissioner said that he was going to put more resources and officers in that area to kind of calm things down. I am uh, extremely concerned about the, the spike in violence. Uh, fighting crime and uh, reducing violence has always been a priority of mine, remains a priority. I understand that in order to have a growing city, we have to have a safer city. And I also understand that while if you took, take a look at violent crime overall, uh, we're still trending downward. Property crime still trending downward. Uh, but the, the one uh, indicator. Or you, if you can look at things like the clearance rate, which shows how how well the the officers are not just making the arrest, but doing the I mean, uh, responding 
but then following up with the investigations, those, are, those numbers are improving. But at the end of the day, the one thing that uh, you can't take back, you know, you can, you can work on investigation and make that better, but, you know, the, the, there is a finality to a homicide that doesn't allow us to recover. And that's why we work so very hard and put more resources uh, in this budget, funding, uh, even in these tough times we have deficits, to fund more than 100 new police officers to make sure that we're keeping pace with attrition, uh, supporting the crime camera network that, that has uh, shown to be helpful in reducing uh, violent crime, as well as maintaining funds for uh, youth violence. I also made sure that uh, the commissioner had resources uh, to step up foot patrols in these areas uh, and to continue our effort to go after guns and gangs. If you take a look at the number of warrants that we have served, that has increased, particularly the, the warrant, apprehended, warrant apprehension for violent offenders. We are putting the pressure on, and the fact that you're seeing uh, more of these incidents uh, taking place inside, the, the fact that you're seeing uh, the, uh, increases in um, other weapons other than guns, you know, shows that the pressure is on. And um, we will continue this pressure until uh, Baltimore becomes one of the, sa the safest big cities in, in, the, in the country. And I'm, I'm, I am uh, confident uh, in our commissioner. Commissioner Batts uh, has, uh, has the wherewithal and I think the team in place uh, to help us uh, reach our goals. And we will continue to give him the resources he needs that we can continue to put that pressure on uh, these violent offenders uh, to take our streets back. You know, we've come too far to go backwards, and uh, I think that the violent offenders on the streets see that. There is an R I'm sorry, just one more. There's an RFP that was discussed at a public safety oversight panel yesterday, mm -hmm. and uh, Councilman Scott was concerned that this was another way of looking outside of the city as opposed to looking inside the city. Any thoughts about that? You know, I, I think we can find solutions to uh, issues that we face, whether they be public safety or any other. Uh, thing um, within the city and from and from without. Uh, the, count, the councilman has uh, valid concerns that I know were addressed at the hearing, but at the end of the day, he is very serious about public safety, as am I, and my commitment is to work with him to get us, uh, as I said, to a place where we are one of the, large, the safest uh, big cities in the country. Thank you.